I got questions about the use of moss for bonsai. Should you have moss on the surface of a bonsai pot when you're growing them or should you avoid it? And there are several answers to that and I will deal with that in this episode of Almost Friday because it is Thursday. In some cases you shouldn't use moss on your bonsai if you have a very compact soil where the drainage isn't free, so you cannot add that oxygen when you're watering and shifting the old gases in the soil, then peel off the mosses. That will help the tree to, or the soil, to release those gases that will be stored in the soil and not being healthy for the tree. Also, you can better check if the tree needs to be watered. In other cases, I keep mosses on the soil, and you can see that at this almost flowering. It has uh, stopped flowering now. It is changing into the season where it will develop fruits. This prunes avium, wild cherry, and I have kept mosses on the surface here to keep up the humidity. The soil is very airy, so I know it is not a problem having mosses on here, and that will keep the moisture within the soil. It will uh, prevent it from evaporating too fast. This is an old tree and I need to take care of it not drying out too fast. I also have some mosses at the base between the roots. They do not harm the tree in any way. If they begin to grow at the trunk, that will be a problem later. Of course, mosses at a trunk might air layer the trunk because mosses have that uh, ability to keep a high level of moisture or humidity and at the same time a high level of oxygen. And that will make some trees earlier, so take care of not letting this ruin the bark up here. That will also risk to, to rot and peel off. So if that happens, I just take a toothbrush and wash it off gently. Then for other trees where I need mosses on top of the surface, if you look at the Lunisha and the Tita here, that is because I have a very dense root system on top and I want to develop that further. Uh, in a month or so I will peel it off, because then the top roots have been established and do not want to add any more root growth at the top. I want it to grow inside the pot at the lower part. But else, uh, aesthetically, of course, for an exhibition, if you do not exhibit, that doesn't matter. But for exhibition or for aesthetic purposes, of course, also, Mosses on the surface is a must for exhibitions and nice in the garden. So it is a need to have at exhibition and a nice to have in the garden. But if you do not have a very airy soil, avoid it. Peel off the moss because that adds that extra oxygen flow. Then there is another myth about using uh, other kind of mosses, the dried sparkno mosses that you use for air laying trees. We use that in a, a repotting session here where I cover the soil surface with some long fiber mosses, especially for this. You can also use fresh mosses if you want to. It doesn't make a big difference as long as it is not waterlogging mosses that are growing too tightly. But here that will help use that non-green, not live moss, but dried bed moss to prevent the soil from running off and keep uh, some moisture at the top of the soil just after repotting. And that is not more airy, it is not better than fresh soil or fresh mosses if you just use mosses that are not too compact. That's the difference. I have never experienced any problems with mosses on my soil, only if they stay too long and the soil gets too wet. And mosses are spreading. I do not need them anymore here. I will take care of the tree not being too wet and begin to rot or air layer itself. In this case, I just remove the mosses because the soil is getting too wet. So it also needs a repotting fairly soon. For daily care, I will not add mosses at larger trees or trees that don't need it, but for small showing where we need to keep the moisture, moisture level a little higher and uh, the humidity a little longer, it can be advisable, but take care of it not spreading to the trunk. 
There are a lot of myths about mosses. What you should avoid are liver mosses or that rosette growing mosses that will kill the tree almost because it will shut out any oxygen to the soil and that is a killer for roots. Here we have the unhealthy mosses and that is a clear sign that this soil is too compact and I need to repot this tree. But I remove it anyway before the repotting so it doesn't spread to the soil until that is done. Moss here, also the healthy moss, because that keeps the moisture level up too high at exactly this tree, so it's necessary to take some actions here. Remove that if that happens. It also is a sign on that the soil structure is too compact and too wet that's where those liver mosses, they thrive best and they ruin the tree. So normally I do not put mosses on trees unless I want to establish a healthy root system. But in the garden, at, uh, for daily care, it should not be necessary. But if you do like mosses, use them. They will not harm very much if you're just careful about having a very airy soil structure. I also use mosses for forest and plantings on a slab with a keto soil, that is a clay soil inside here to keep the soil from running off. Then adding the mosses because here the soil will ev evaporate the moisture from the soil very fast because there are no edges like on that bonsai pot that will keep the moisture inside for a longer time. But here it will just evaporate from above and the sides, therefore the mosses helps keeping that planting healthy growing. So for compact soil structures, remove the moss immediately. In this case, mosses was added when the tree was repotted because the roots are not reaching the edges of the pot yet. They are around here, that's where they reach, but they will grow out here eventually. But to secure that they would not dry out at the edges here, I added mosses all around and inside at the older part, I have just removed the mosses so I can begin to dry up that part and mature those roots. Then, after this season, when the roots have grown out here, I can remove this moss or put it at the edges to protect the next growth period here. But most likely, I will just remove it because the juniper here needs a very airy soil and no mosses attached. So it also is dependent on the species we are working with. In general, avoid mosses at coniferous trees unless they have a specific purpose because coniferous evergreen trees need a higher volume of oxygen. They need to avoid being wet for too long where this some deciduous tree or most deciduous trees tolerate being humid a little longer or need it so they do not dry out. There is a difference. But everything has to do with this exact tree and the purpose, purpose of the mosses. So for exhibitions, you add them and afterwards you remove them. For daily care, they're only necessary if there is a health issue with the roots or you support the roots or you support your humidity, especially at small trees. I will continue repotting, adding mosses when needed and removing mosses where they have stayed too long and obviously here at this tree it is necessary to brush that off so I do not air layer that trunk and keep it too wet. Improve your skills, improve your bonsai with a Bonsai On membership. Weekly tutorials with caretaking techniques and inspiration from the Kisetsu N Bonsai Garden. Join the Kisetsu N learning experience with international Shohen Bonsai expert Morten Albeck. With a Bonsai On membership you get immediate access to the growing library with hours of tutorials for beginners and experts. Also join the members live Q&A every month where you will experience the friendly spirit of Kisetsu N.